Back when I was studying for the SAT, one of the toughest and the hardest moment was getting my score back and not seeing any improvements. And when it happened for the first time, it wasn't so bad because I just told myself, I'll just study harder, I'll work harder, and my score is eventually going to go up. But if it happens two, three, four times, and you just don't see any improvements, then that's pretty tough. And that's exactly where I was back in high school. But in this video, I'm going to share with you how I was able to escape that stuck zone, raise my SAT score, and get a perfect 800 on the math section on my next SAT. What's going guys, if it's your first time here, my name is John Jung. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years. And my specialty is to take a student who is currently in four, five, 600 range on the math section and take them to 700 plus by their next SAT. And as I mentioned before, my score was stuck for a very long time. And just to be clear, that wasn't because I wasn't putting in any work. I was, I think I was studying pretty hard because Monday through Friday, I would study for about one to two hours per day. And on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, I would go to the library the moment it opens at nine o'clock and until it closed at six o'clock in the afternoon, I would stay there, study SAT, take the practice exams. That's all I did. And my logic at the time was that if I work really hard, my score is going to go up by a lot because that's how it was for everything else, for like sports, for like GPA and high school. SAT had to be the same thing. If I work hard, I'm not going to get betrayed by my hard work. My score is going to go up. And it turns out I wasn't the only one because I meet a lot of students on a daily basis and they go through the same problem. They study hard, they work hard, but they just don't see the results. So why is it that our score is not going up despite studying so hard, right? Well, that's because I didn't know what I know now. And after tutoring for 10 years and just being focused on SAT math section, what I realized is that raising your SAT math score can be simplified into this one simple equation. And that is method times effort is equal to score increases. What I mean by that is method is how you study and effort is how much you study. And when those two things are multiplied, it decides how much your score is going to increase by. So for me, I was studying really hard. So my effort was a 10. But the way I was studying for the SAT, how I was studying for the SAT was just disastrous. It was a complete zero. As a result, my score never went up. And you might be wondering what was John doing that was so bad at the time? Well, it's actually really simple. I was just copying what other smart kids were doing because their scores were going up. So I'm just going to do exactly what they were doing. And what they were doing was they were taking practice exams after exams after exams. And that's when I thought to myself, Okay, that's how you raise your SAT score. You got to take a lot of practice exams, right? And we all took a lot of exams, but what's funny is that their score actually went up, but my score didn't go up. Even though we did the exact same thing, their score went up, my score didn't. And why was that happening? Well, that's because at their score range, when they are in the 700s, they were supposed to be taking the practice exams. They were doing the right thing. But for me, I was around 560, 570 and the practice exams were the last things I should be doing. I should have been doing something else. So for them, their method was a 10, but for me, my method was a zero. As a result, they saw the increase. I didn't see any increase. And what was I supposed to be doing? Well, here's the thing. I was scoring around 550, 560, 570, which means I was guessing on half of the questions on the SAT. And why was I guessing on them? Because I didn't know how to solve them. See, on the SAT, there are only about 25 concepts that are being tested. And at the time when I was at 570, I pretty much only knew about 10 concepts while not knowing the other 15 concepts. And as a result, whenever I'm taking the practice exam, when these 10 concept based questions show up, when a question I knew about showed up, I would get them right. I would get the questions based on these 10 concepts I knew, I would get these correct. But the other 15, I would just get them wrong because I didn't know what trigonometry was. I didn't know how to do triangle questions. I didn't know how to do function questions, percent questions. These were four of the concepts that I was really shaky on. And whenever these things showed up, I would just get them wrong automatically. So essentially I was getting the ones I knew right and ones I didn't know wrong. And this was essentially repeating throughout the whole process for every single exam. Exam number one, get these right, get these wrong. Exam number two, right, wrong. Exam three, right, wrong. 
And I was thinking to myself, why is my score not going up? I'm studying so much. Well, the thing is, it's not only about working hard. It's about working smart. A logical thing to do is if I'm getting all of these questions wrong because I don't know these concepts, then I should probably go and learn these concepts instead of taking more exams and more exams and more exams, because that's exactly where the problem is. I'm missing these questions because I am weak on these concepts, which means if I work and strengthen these concepts and bring them into over here, that means I'm going to get all of these questions correct. I'm going to score higher and my score is going to be moving upwards. So I don't know why, but it took me a very long time for me to realize this. And one morning I had this enlightenment saying, oh, maybe I should just focus on learning these concepts so I know how to solve every question on the SAT. And since then, I changed my strategy from taking practice exams to studying the concepts. And next thing you know, on the next SAT, I got a 670. And on the next SAT, I got a perfect 800. So what you can take away from this video can be nicely summarized into these two mistakes that I have made and you can learn from. The first one is that there is a very simple equation to raising your SAT score, and that is it's just method times effort is equal to score increase. And studying hard alone is not enough because if your method is equal to zero, your score is not going to go up. You can't simply work hard, but you got to work smart. And how can you work smart? Well, here's the right way to do it. In terms of method, if you're currently under 700 and you're trying to go above 700, you just got to do two things. One, you got to master 25 different concepts that are tested on the SAT. If you know these 25 concepts, you're going to be able to solve every single question on the exam. And two, once you are capable of solving every question, then it's time for you to master these exam question patterns. Because SAT is an exam of repetition, they're going to recycle questions and give you the same exact question with slight variation of words, numbers, and a little bit of difference in shape. However, how you solve all of these questions are identical. So as long as you can catch on to these exam patterns, then you're going to be able to solve these questions even faster. Because as you know, SAT has a time limit and you want to be able to solve these questions as quickly as possible so that you can spend the rest of the times on the questions that you might be stuck on or to review your answers and make sure you didn't make any mistakes. So master 25 concepts and master the exam patterns. And if you don't know what these 25 concepts are, I'm going to link them down below in the comment section. You can go ahead and download the full list of 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. So Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, click the like button and I'll see you guys on the next video.